Good afternoon and welcome to Holman High School as we have girls softball action for you today on the YouTube channel. Our first play-by-play -play broadcast of the spring. We had baseball yesterday but no audio with that as I was doing the PA so we had nobody to cover the broadcast on the YouTube channel. Hope you enjoyed at least having the video of that. Might happen for the home baseball games um, because there is no PA for those games. And so we might just have video only for the baseball. For the road games, though, we will have play-by-play. -play. In fact, we have one coming up on Thursday for baseball at Onalaska. Today, softball. Central versus Holman, the first conference game of the year for the Riverhawks. In fact, in fact, the first game in Wisconsin as they were in Florida for a spring break trip. Had four, three games down there that were exhibitions, one official game. They lost to Oak Harbor, Ohio, and so they are 0-1, 0-0 in the conference. And it looks like we're getting ready for the national anthem. Maybe not. Okay, we'll keep going. Of course, the head coach, Kevin Colburn, his 21st season, 19 of them before they had some schmuck get in there and try and coach for a while. And then he came back, and he's been coaching the last two years. So 21 total. And they're going over starting lineups, and so we'll go over the starting lineups as well for the Central River Hawks. You probably can't catch the PA sound out here. So we do have Carmen Peterson, junior pitcher, leading off. Ellie Gillitzer, freshman. Notice how young this River Hawk team is. Ellie Gillitzer, the freshman, playing shortstop and batting second. Alyssa Brixen is catching. She's a senior, batting third. Grace Blagan playing first base, also a senior, batting fourth. Batting fifth, Brianna Mayer. She is a center fielder, a senior. Batting sixth, Addie Raisler, freshman. She's the designated player today, playing for her sister, Emma Raisler, who is, or batting for Emma Raisler, who is playing second defensively. Sophomore, Malia Tomesh is batting seventh and is playing right field. Batting eighth, Ashani Yang. And she is playing third base. She's a, a junior, excuse me. And Elena Wagner rounds out the lineup for the Riverhawks, playing left field. She's a sophomore. Lots of young players for this Riverhawks softball squad. For Holman, Macy Klein. Read all about her in the paper today. She had a game yesterday. We'll talk a little bit about that as they played West Salem. Macy Klein is the second baseman leadoff. Isabel Hawkins plays right field and bats second. Marcy Jacobson is the pitcher. We'll talk a little bit about her as well. Uh, she bats third. Izzy Jar, the shortstop, bats fourth. Taylor Everson, the first baseman, bats fifth. McKenna McHugh, the center fielder, bats, bats sixth. Gabby Stewart, the third baseman, bats seventh. Molly Towner, the left fielder, in the eighth spot. And rounding out the order for the Holman Vikings is Mary Korish. She's the catcher. And now we are ready for the national anthem. And there is your national anthem. It's a George family reunion out here in center field as I got my dad working the camera. My sister, who said she did not want to come up here today, just showed up. And she's going to be running the scoreboard, the score bug for you. Very grateful because I was trying to figure out how I was going to do that and broadcast and fill out my book all at the same time. So I'm glad she's here. So thank you to both of them for joining me. Joel, you might be wondering where Joel is. Well, it's hard for him to do spring sports. 
being a stay-at-home dad, his wife works until 5, so they start too early for him. But also, he's flying back from Cancun today. So they were in Cancun for the week, got all kinds of pictures to make me feel jealous. But hey, 61 degrees and sunny, we'll take that for early April softball. And we're outside, and what more could you ask for? Been kind of a rough start to the spring season, lots of games postponed. But we're out here today and ready for... Central's first MVC game, and I say Central's first MVC game because Holman already had one. They lost to Aquinas 0-1, to maybe a little bit of an upset, at least in my mind, as kind of expecting Holman to be pretty good. But, in fact, they're 1-3 and coming in today. Lost to Aquinas, got shut out 6-0. Then they had to go to Wisconsin Rapids for a doubleheader and drop both those games, lost 5-2 to and 14-4. to They got their first win, though, last night, a big Victory over West Salem, 13-1. to Of course, that's a non-conference game. But how about the day for Macy Klein, the sophomore for Holman. Three for four last night, a home run, a double, six RBI. And so you can bet Coach Colbert and these Riverhawks are going to be very cautious when pitching to Klein today. And we're about ready for softball here. The pitcher for Holman, Marcy Jacobson, is a senior. And junior Carmen Peterson, the pitcher for Central, leads off. Jacobson gets the sign, lovers the first pitch. Peterson hard on the ground to first, foul ball. Fielded nicely by the first baseman, but it was a foul ball. And so the count runs 0-1. First baseman for Holman, Taylor Everson. Nice job getting down on that ball. Peterson with good contact, though, right away. Second pitch is high. Evens the count at 1-1. A lot of pressure on Carmen Peterson this year. Such a good player, really great pitcher, and really has to provide some offense for this team too. Um, as you're going to notice, the bottom of the order starts getting pretty young. Well, not even the bottom of the order because we have freshman Ellie Gillitzer on deck. But you look at six, seven, eight, nine. They go freshman, sophomore, junior, sophomore. And so it's going to be up to Carmen Peterson, Alyssa Brixen, and some of those at the top of the order. To get some runs. Here's a drive to center field, but right at the center fielder. And that was great contact for Peterson. Line drive out as McKenzie out in center field. So if you're Coach Colburn, you'll take that contact all day long. Just happened that that one went right at the home and outfielder. That brings up Ellie Gillitzer, the shortstop. Got a chance to talk to Coach Buxton and Coach Colburn. Both of them mentioned Ellie Gillitzer, particularly on defense. Um, how great she's been and how good of a player she's going to be. I'm excited to watch her. Of course, we saw her on the basketball court and that successful season, so excited to see her now on the softball diamond. Swings and misses at strike one. Jacobson looking in, getting the signs. Gillets are a little bit of a slap down the right field line, and that's off the dugout and out of play. And it's 0-2 quickly on Gillitzer. Coach has been raving about her defensively. In fact, Coach Colburn said if everything could be hit just a short, that would be great. Has a lot of confidence in her at that shortstop position. This one fouled off into the dugout again. Gillets are really, really working the right field line here. See if she can tuck one inside the bag. Although it looks like Holman's third baseman is right on the line. 0-2 here to Gillitzer. Jacobson with the pitch. Swung on. It was a high pitch, but with two strikes, probably too close to take. And right up my car, so it's perfect. Thank you, Ellie. 0 2 to Gillitzer. One out here, top of the first inning, just underway. Jacobson with the pitch. Line shot. What a play by the second baseman. Is good. Throw Gillitzer out from her backside. Wow, we're some talk about some defense right there. Let's figure out who that is. That's oh, of course, it's Macy Klein with the diving stop and the throw out from her backside to first base right on the money. What a play there by Klein. Two away now, and that brings up the senior catcher, Alyssa Brixen. Macy Klein, only a sophomore. Of course, remember her sister Ellie Klein. Lost sleep when I was coaching, trying to figure out ways to get her out. Never really did figure that out. And it looks like Macy's going to be the same way. 
or daughter of Marcy Klein. Marcy had a great high school career too, basketball and softball. This is a ball. It's one and one now. Is it one and one? I think it's one and one. Yep. Anissa says yes, one and one. Klein gets, I'm sorry, Jacobson gets the sign and delivers. Brixon, high pop fly down the right field line. Stays in play, but Jar unable to make the catch. She got there. Kind of stabbed at it right at the last second, just over her head. And new life for Alyssa Brixon. Wind is blowing out. And as I feel it on my face. So you got to feel like if Brixon can get one up into the atmosphere here, we could be in danger out here to protect that camera. Jacobson with the pitch. Line straight back. Brixon right on it. One and two. Senior season for Alyssa Brixon. Quite the career she's had. This one, a line drive out to right field, but that one's right at the right fielder. Isabel Hawkins, who makes the catch. So you look at that inning. It's a 1-2-3 inning for Jacobson. It was a line drive out to center, a diving play at second, and a line drive out to right for the 1-2-3 inning. And that makes it tough for the Riverhawks, who really need the top of the order to score. Maybe they'll, it'll even out in the end. We'll see. You can see our defense alignment there. I'm excited about that graphic. Yesterday's was small. I'm working on getting it bigger. If you saw the baseball game, it was too small. You couldn't read anything. I'm trying to get it bigger. It's a little bit bigger, not quite as big as I'd like yet. I want it to be full screen. But you got to understand, when I'm doing technology stuff, that's a week or two weeks of a project. That, that doesn't happen just in a day. I'm not Coach Arnold. I can't just figure things out on my own. But there you see the defense alignment. And so Carmen, pitch, Carmen Peterson pitching. Alyssa Brixen is catching Grace Blagan at first. Emma Raisler at second, and Emma is actually a sophomore. I got my Raislers mixed up, so I think it says freshman on the screen, but she's a sophomore. Ellie Gillitzer at short. The third baseman is Ashani Yang. And the outfield from left to right, Elena Wagner, sophomore in left field. Brianna Mayer. Saw her on the basketball court. She's right in front of us here in center field to you. And so we're always grateful to our sponsors. Going to be coming back out here pretty soon looking for some more money for next season. So i got to keep building those guys up, talk about how great they are so that we can keep on bringing this game. And Mr. Hansen says he liked the graphic. Good. Mr. Hansen, you, I know you won't believe this, but that was three weeks' worth of work. But I got it figured out today. <laughs> today was the day I got it figured out. But I did get it figured out. So hopefully we'll be able to bring that to you for each baseball and softball game. Leadoff batter is Macy Klein, the second baseman. She's only a sophomore coming off of a career game yesterday against West Salem. Six RBIs, home run, double. Peterson delivers the first pitch, and it's high for ball one. I already saw Macy have an impact on this game with the diving play at second base. And it's one thing to get to that ball. It's another to throw from your backside and make a throw on the money. Here's a high pop fly. Short stop and center field converge, and it'll be Mayer who will make the catch. And so Klein is retired. F8 if you're following along at home with your scorebook. And that'll bring up Isabel Hawkins, the right fielder. Hawkins, a senior, steps in. Peterson gets the signs and delivers the first pitch, and Hawkins swings and misses. 0-1, the count. Peterson delivers. Change up on the outside corner. What a pitch that is. Not going to do much with that, and it's 0-2 quickly here to Hawkins. See if Carmen can give her something nasty here with an 0-2 count. Peterson with the pitch. Goes back with the speed, and it's about letter high. Hawkins swings through it, 
And Carmen Peterson has her first strikeout of the day. And there's quickly two outs on the Vikings. That brings up the pitcher, Marcy Jacobson, the senior. We'll talk about some of her pitching stats here in a little bit. Right now she's on the offensive end. Peterson drops it in off speed. In for a strike. Boy, if you can throw that first pitch, change up for a strike, you can really get the batters off balance. That is a key to being successful. Peterson able to do it there. Jacobson ropes one here out to right field. Wagner will field it on the hop and get it in. And there's our first hit of the day. A line drive to left field. Single for Marcy Jacobson. Taylor Baker will run. Courtesy runner for the pitcher. And that will bring up Izzy Jar. Izzy Jar, a senior, shortstop. One of the better hitters in the conference last year, in fact. Batted 371 on the season. Six doubles, three triples, five home runs. So not only is she a great contact hitter, she's a power hitter as well. This one is in there for a strike. Jar tried to duck underneath it. Umpire didn't fall for it. 0-1 the count. Baker on first, two away here, bottom of the first inning, no score. Peterson the pitch, this one is high, and one and one's a count. Wonder if Holman will get Baker in motion here with two outs, a big RBI producer at the plate. See if they can get Baker in scoring position. Peterson the pitch. That one inside. Question mark? Nisa says yes. So inside, two and one. If it missed, it didn't miss by much. Now we're not directly with the home plate, so it gets distorted a little bit, but boy, this one is high. Three and one now the count. Peterson takes a little walk around the rubber, and now she's ready to step back in. Gets her signs, 3-1 count, the pitch. Change up, driven right towards us. Center field, it's down and gets past Mayer. It's going to go all the way to the fence right in your living room here. Mayer will get it in and throw it to, well, throw it into the infield, but that's going to be an RBI triple for Izzy Jar. You knew once it got past Mayer, it was going to be big trouble. And it just hopped she had a decent angle on it, but it just hopped a little too far out of her reach. <coughs> Excuse me. Cough so hard to knock my headset off. And so quickly, one nothing as Izzy Jar continues to do damage to the River Hawks. I remember that from my, back my days coaching Izzy Jar, and I think she had an older sister that also hurt us all the time. So this is Taylor Everson, first baseman. Everson, the junior, watches ball one. Next one is in there, swung on and missed, one and one. Two outs here, Izzy Jar on third after an RBI triple. Jar put a good swing on it, drove it all the way to the fence. Peterson, the pitch. This one is low, two and one now the count. Central fan, not real happy with that call. That one was a ball, and pretty clearly a ball. It was one earlier that I questioned, but Peterson with the pitch. This one on the ground, fouled away. And that evens the count at two and two. Hope you enjoy the graphics. It's not easy to do. you got to have almost somebody dedicated just to that. Nisa did not know I was volunteering her to do all these games. But as long as she's here, you'll have that graphic up. Count runs full now, 3-2. and two. And 
Peterson delivers. Swung on straight back and into the fence. Count will remain full. one nothing Holman early on here, bottom of the first inning. Peterson with the pitch. Nice change up. Great job staying back on it. Drops it just over the third baseman's head. Yang dove for it, unable to get it, but the ball went foul anyway. Great effort there by Ashani Yang, though. Had to drop her short. That's a tough play for a third baseman. Remember, the third baseman are not playing as deep as the shortstop or the second baseman. Look, I mean, look at where Yang is playing. She's four or five steps in. Now Coach Buxton telling her to back up a little bit. She's four or five steps in, so a ball over her head is really tough to get to. Made a great effort there, almost came up with the play. Peterson, the pitch is high, and that'll be ball four. Good at bat there by Everson. Spoiled a couple good pitches, and now runners on the corners here for the Vikings. That'll bring up the center fielder, McKenna McHugh, sophomore for the Vikings. And we'll see what the Vikings want to do with a first and third situation here. Already up one nothing. McHugh, the sixth batter in the lineup. Peterson, the pitch. Everson took a couple hard steps like she was going. In fact, I heard Coach Coburn and Buxton yell going. Looked like she was going to go, and then she stopped. So I wonder if they're just trying to draw a throw, or maybe hit and run was on there. I'm not sure what was going on there. Ball was fouled back, though, so 0 1 the count. Peterson with the pitch. This one's in there for a strike. Peterson quickly had 0 2. This is a big batter right here. You can get out of this inning with only giving up one run. You're the Riverhawks, you got to feel pretty good, especially the way they contacted the ball that first inning. You got to feel like eventually those are going to fall. 0 2 the pitch. This one is high, one and two, good pitch there by Carmen with two strikes. Last thing you want to do is groove one down the middle here with two strikes, and now it's one, two. Can still work around the corners here a little bit. Brickson waiting for the signs from Coach Colburn. Colburn gives them. Relayed to Peterson in the pitch. That's in there for strike three. A great pitch there by Carmen Peterson. Freezes McHugh and ends the inning. So after one complete inning, it's 1-0. Holman, two hits there, one walk, one run, no errors, and they leave two runners on base. We need to pay some bills. Let's go to our donation sponsors. Welcome back to Holman High School 1-0 as we start the second inning. Thank you to our donation sponsors and all our sponsors for allowing us to be here, have the equipment to bring you these games. This is Blagan with the drive to deep right. But that's McHugh. Nope, it's actually Isabel Hawkins who was able to get to it. So a fly out for Grace Blagan, F9. And that will bring up senior center fielder, Brianna Mayer. Jacobson with the pitch. Just inside. Okay, so that's going to be a ball all day. I'm fine with that as long as it's both ways. Jacobson, they don't have their stats up for this year yet. Last year, 9-5 and five overall, 2.33 ERA. Here's a bunt by Mayer. 
Fielded by the third baseman. Throw is true over to first base. And quickly two away here. Nice play by Gabby Stewart. 5-3 on the put out. 2.33 ERA for Marcy Jacobson. Pretty impressive. Again, 9-5 and five record. And pitching well so far here. Two down in the second inning here. Here's a ground ball right back at her off the bat of Addie Raisler. And a 1-2-3 inning again for the Riverhawks. A quick inning. And the last thing that Coach Colburn and Carmen Peterson were hoping for. Carmen probably wishing she could get a little more time to catch her breath. Instead, she's right back out into the circle. Nisa says that was four pitches. Not ideal for the Riverhawks. Blagan got good contact on it, just underneath it a little bit. Allowed Hawkins to be able to get underneath and make the catch. Busy schedule coming up here this week. Thursday, we are at Onalaska for baseball. Friday, we are at State Road for softball as the Onalaska Hilltopper softball team comes to State Road. Trying to figure out where we're going to set up for that. we got some ideas. We'll see where we can get. We'll get you the best view we can for Friday. And then a doubleheader of baseball on Saturday. That game will be played at UWL. Might be video only. Don't know. I know Mr. Ambrose is working on finding a PA guy for the baseball games. If you are interested in doing PA, we would love to have you. Mr. Hansen? Question mark? We would love to have somebody doing the PA so that I could do the broadcasts. Otherwise, we'll have the video up. And so you won't miss any of the action. But I know you're all tuned in to hear me talk, and if I'm not talking, Nisa's rolling her eyes. No, that's not what they're tuned in for. No, she says no. Okay. All right. Bottom of the second inning here for the Vikings. Gabby Stewart, the third baseman leading off. The head coach of Holman is Dan Stewart. Dan Stewart, those of you that are softball people know, he coached at GET for a long, long time. Legendary coach for GET. And so when I saw his name as the coach, I was trying to figure out why he's in Holman, and then I saw the lineup. And I'm going to guess that this is his daughter. And so he's decided to come and coach for the Vikings. Stewart falls one off. 1-1 one, one the count. Stewart only a sophomore. So she'll be around for a while. So maybe that's why Dan decided to jump ship and come on over to Holman. Peterson misses low with that pitch. Two and one the count. That is all speculation, by the way. Maybe they're not related at all. Peterson in there with a strike. Evens the count at two and two. Peterson set and delivers. Swung on and missed, and Carmen Peterson starts the second inning with a strikeout, her third on the day. And that'll bring up Molly Towner, the senior left fielder. Peterson's pitch lined over the second baseman's head. That's to right field. Takes a tough hop. Tomesh able to knock it down at least and hold Towner to a single. Third hit on the day for the Vikings. And that'll bring up Mary Korish, the catcher, senior catcher for the Vikings. The number nine hitter. So they'll turn it back over to Klein after Korish. Peterson in there with a strike on the inside corner. 0-1 the count. Ollie Towner on first base. Peterson set and delivers. Swung on and missed. Korish over the top of the low fastball. Maybe it was a drop. In fact, I think it probably was a drop ball. Where we need Mr. Hansen helping out on the broadcast. Tell me what pitches I'm seeing. 
0-2 the count. Peterson set. Misses high, and it's 1-2. and Going to have him joining some of the broadcasts. And Coach Regner, when he gets back from Arizona, is going to join the broadcast. Joe Branson is going to join the baseball broadcast. We're going to have some experts joining the broadcast. Just me today, though, so I apologize for that. Peterson high, 2-2 two and two now the count. One out here, bottom of the second inning, runner on first for Holman. Peterson the pitch. Swung on and fouled back. Keeps the count even at twos. See the girls in short sleeves today. It's, it's nice out right now. A little bit of a breeze, cool breeze, but definitely can't complain about the weather today. Peterson the pitch. This is a pop fly. Tomash gives it a look, but it's out of play. Down the right field line, and the count will remain at 2-2. Two and two. Big out to get here. You don't want to turn it back over to the top of the order with runners in scoring position if you're the Riverhawks. Peterson with the pitch. Nice drop ball or change, one or the other. And gets the strikeout on Korish. And there is the big out. Her fourth strikeout so far as Carmen's been pitching well. And that turns it over to Macy Klein, the second baseman. Klein flew out to center in her first at bat. Peterson with the pitch. Ground ball down the third baseline, just foul. Yang did a good job to get to it, but the ball was foul, and it's 0-1 on Klein. Sun coming out now. Be even warmer. Peterson with the pitch. This one's high. Runner is going. Throw from Brixen is pretty good, but Gilts are at a pop out of her glove. And so a stolen base for Molly Towner. Pitch was a ball, so it's one and one. Towner to second on the stolen base. Peterson with the pitch. Just misses on the outside corner. Two and one now the count. Hoping to have Coach Colburn join us after the game for post-game interview. We'll see what his mood is like. He's in a talkative mood. Peterson the pitch. Driven out to right. That is trouble if it's fair, but it's foul. So Tomesh went after it, kind of lost her footing a little bit. The ground is very soft. And Coach Buxton said there were some holes in the outfield, so I wonder if she caught one of those holes. She kind of lost her footing. And I don't know, we have no angle to know how close that was. If that would have been fair, that would have been big, big trouble. Instead, it's a long strike. And two and two is the count. Peterson the pitch and got her on the inside corner nice pitch by Carmen Peterson ties up Macy Klein strikeout swinging one hit no runs for the Vikings no errors and after two the score is 1-0 we're going to send it over to Matthew Construction we'll be back right after this on the Central YouTube channel Consolidated Energy Company is a local family owned supplier of refined fuels and propane for more than 30 years, they've supported local homeowners, farmers, and businesses in the Cooley region and beyond. Customers count on Consolidated Energy for reliable supply and service at competitive rates. Check out their programs created to meet your unique fuel and propane needs at ConsolidatedEnergyCo.com or call 608-782-3308. And welcome back to Holman as we're getting ready to start the third inning. 1-0 your score as Holman able to push across a run in the first inning thanks to the RBI triple by Izzy Jar. And that's the difference so far. Central made decent contact so far, but is still without a hit as we head to the third inning. It'll be Malia Tomesh, the sophomore, Ashani Yang, the junior, and Elena Wagner, the sophomore, 
do up in this inning for the Riverhawks. Tolmesh playing right field today. As little delay as the umpires having a conversation about something. They got it figured out. And we're ready to start the third inning. Jacobson sets and delivers. Swung on on a high fastball. Or rise ball, Hans. Strike one, anyway. Oh, one the count. Jacobson digs in and delivers. Swung on and missed as that one was low and on the outside corner. Probably strike. But not much you can do with that pitch. Jacobson delivers. And that was interesting as Tomash looked to try to bunt with two strikes. And I'm trying to look if that was a missed sign or if Coach Coburn wanted that. And from his reaction, it looks like that was a missed sign. As he's given the dust there, it looks like, into the dugout. You can't imagine she was trying to bunt there unless maybe she's very fast. I'm not sure. But with two strikes, that's risky. This one is swung on and missed. Ashani Yang, the third baseman. And now Coach Coburn is going to call time and have a little conversation with Ashani Yang. Ready to resume action here. Jacobson. Pitch is in there for a strike, and it's quickly 0-2 to Yang. See some teams going to the wristbands for signs and Holman wearing their wristbands. So Coach Stewart utilizing that. We tried that for a couple years. We still had missed signs, even with the wristbands. I, I don't know. This one has followed back, and... Off the catcher, 0-2 the count. I don't know what the answer is. Sometimes it's just about focus and making sure you're paying attention. I'm not sure. I'm looking at Coach Colburn. I don't see him. Of course, it's 0-2 right now, so he's not going to give him any signs. But Jacobson the pitch. And Ashani Yang swings and misses. Jacobson two strikeouts in a row now on the River Hawks, and that will bring up sophomore left fielder. Elena, Yang, Elena Wagner, sorry. Elena Wagner. Two outs here in the top of the third inning. Riverhawks still searching for their first hit. Jacobson delivers. This one's in there for a strike. A lot of young players on this Riverhawk team. Facing a veteran pitcher in Jacobson. This one, the bottom of the zone for strike two. And it's quickly 0-2 to Wagner. This one just misses off the outside corner. One and two, the count. Jacobson looks in and delivers. High pop fly. Third baseman calls everybody off. Makes the catch. Gabby Stewart with the catch. F5 for Wagner. And Central is through the order with no hits. No base runners, in fact. One, The third 1-2-3 inning for Jacobson. Two strikeouts in that half inning as well. So Central will turn it over back to the top of the order in the fourth, but first they got to get through the bottom of the third. And Holman is at their 2-3-4 hitters. Isabel Hawkins, who struck out in her first at bat. Marcy Jacobson, who singled. And then Izzy Jar, who did the only damage so far with the RBI triple. And so a big inning here defensively for the Riverhawks. Try and get through this and then let the top of the order do some damage, hopefully. The 
was looking at the schedule for April. Dan and Nisa will be happy to hear this. Pretty much every day in April, except on Wednesdays, we have a broadcast. So we're going to be hitting lots of games. I said in the beginning of the year our goal was to get to 100 broadcasts. We're on pace. We're on pace to get to 100 with all of our football, basketball, volleyball. Hope you've enjoyed all that. We'll be back again next year, assuming that our sponsors are still willing to be a part of it. Summer is time to go around and try and find sponsors that are interested in keeping this thing going. Without them, we cannot do it. Just can't do it. And so we will be going around, Joel and I will be going around this summer and contacting local businesses. If you know anybody that wants to sponsor or if you would like to sponsor, get a hold of me or Mr. Ambrose or Joel McCall. At Radio McCall is his Twitter handle. So here is Isabel Hawkins, strikeout victim in her first step at Peterson Lowell with ball one. Hawkins, the right fielder. A senior for this Viking squad. Peterson's pitch swung on. Bop back and out of play, and that one hit a truck. Not mine this time, though. One and one. Peterson digs in and delivers. Swung on straight back. Hawkins right on it. Balled it straight back into the fence. Count runs to one and two. Going to be interesting to watch this softball team this year. I think they're going to be a team that gets better as the year goes on just because of their youth. Two freshmen in the starting lineups. In the starting lineup, three sophomores, I think, in the starting lineup. This one is in there for a strike. And Isabel Hawkins, second time today, goes down. This time, the backward variety, backward K. And that's the first out of the inning and a big first out for Carmen Peterson. Marcy Jacobson steps in. Marcy had a single in her first at bat in the first inning. Also came around to score. Peterson delivers. This one is high for ball one. See the nice press box that they have up there behind home plate? Problem is it's very, very small. So they get their scorer and PA guy up there, and they're pretty much filled up. So we couldn't get in there. This one fouled off to the right side and out of play. One and one, the count now on Jacobson. Got to thank Holman High School for allowing us up here. Mr. Luloff always allows us to come up and broadcast events. We're very appreciative of that. Had to plug into their power today, so. Grateful for the accommodations and for the nice weather. Peterson's pitch misses high. Two and one now the count. Peterson the pitch. It's a pop fly up and out of play along the right side. Two and two now the count. Should mention that for the spring sports, if there's any rain and they continue to play the game, we probably will not broadcast as we have a couple thousand dollars worth of equipment sitting out here. So we're going to have to be very careful for that. We do have a tent that we can set up, but this one's driven to center field. Oh, shortstop. Oh, Gillitzer almost made a play. I thought it was deeper than it was. Gillitzer dropped her shoulder, unable to get to it, though, and that'll be Marcy Jacobson's second base hit of the day. Off the bat, I thought that was coming out to us. It was actually... More up in the air. Just out of the reach of Gillitzer. And that'll bring up Izzy Jar. RBI triple in her first at bat. Almost the exact situation, only just one out now. There were two outs in the first inning. 
Peterson with the pitch. Jar swung on and missed. A nice off-speed pitch by Peterson to get the first strike. Gets those hitters that want to get up there and just crush the ball. If you can change up speeds on them, get them out on their front foot, you can do some damage. Peterson the pitch. This is a fast ball just inside. Boy. And what a big call that is. Instead of 0-2, now it's 1-1. One one. Peterson with the pitch. This one is fouled straight back. 1-2. and two. This one, check swing. Did she go? No, says the field umpire. Runs the count to two and two. Peterson with the pitch. Swung on and missed. Snap throw down to first, not in time. But what a big strike out there for Carmen Peterson. Strikes out Izzy Jar for the second out of the inning. Peterson now with six strikeouts already through two and two-thirds innings. Brings up Taylor Everson. Everson walked her first at bat. Pitch is swung on, popped high in the infield. Peterson calls everybody off, makes the catch, and retires the side. F1 on the putout. One hit for the Vikings. It was Jacobson. She was stranded. We're going to send it off to Munson and Team Wireless. We'll be back right after this on the Central YouTube channel. This Central Riverhawk sports broadcast is brought to you in part by Munson Realty, a locally family-owned professional property management company serving the La Crosse area since 1988. Looking for a place to rent? Contact Munson Realty at 608-785-7187 or online at MunsonRealtyLAX.com. And Team Wireless, Lacrosse's hometown Verizon store. They are a proud sponsor of the Central Riverhawks. Find Team Wireless in the Three Rivers Plaza on Copeland Avenue. Go Riverhawks! Welcome back to Holman High School. 1-0 your score after three innings. As we start the top of the fourth inning, Central still searching for their first base runner today. They are at the top of their order. It'll be Carmen Peterson, Ellie Gilzer, and Alyssa Brixen, who all hit the ball hard in their first at bat off Jacobson. Nothing to show for it, though. So we'll see if they can get something going here this inning. one nothing. So get some base runners here and see what happens. Carmen steps in from the left side. The pitch. Swung on, ground ball. Klein gobbles it up. Throws to first, and one pitch, one out for Marcy Jacobson. Brings up the freshman shortstop, Ellie Gillitzer, also from the left side. Jacobson with the pitch. Ellie's dad, of course, Scott Gillitzer, who was a phenomenal baseball player out of Prairie du Chien. Went on to play in the Dodgers organization for a number of years. Jacobson with the pitch. This is a ground ball. Klein again gobbles it up. Underhand throw to first base. And two quick outs for Jacobson. Yeah, Ellie's dad worked with Sam, with Zach, my son. He was hitting over the winter. So appreciative of that. See if it helps him out at all as the season wears on here. Zach's had a pretty good start to the season. We'll see if he can get even better as it warms up a little bit. Brixen, fly ball to center field, and there's a the first hit. It's going to go all the way to the wall right in front of us here. Brixen will round first, get to second. She'll stop right there. And the Riverhawks have their first hit of the day in the form of a double from Melissa Brixen. Good contact there. Between left and center field. And we'll have a courtesy runner for the catcher. 
Maddie Young will step in for Brixen. Two outs here. Grace Blagan up. Grace hit it hard last time. Line drive or fly ball, line drive to right field. But an RBI opportunity here for the senior first baseman. First pitch is a ball. blagan has got home run power. She could put one out if she can get a good swing on it. This one fouled straight back. Grace was right on it. Fouled it back into the fence. 1-1 one, one the count. See if Grace can find a base hit here. Tie up this game. Jacobs in the pitch. Swung on over the top. And the count. One and two now. Jacobson gets the sign. Swing on the pitch. This one outside. Two and two. Maddie Young getting a nice healthy lead here at second. Got to feel like anything that drops, Young is going to be scoring on all the way with the lead she's getting. Jacobs in the pitch. Blagan swings over the top of it and goes down swinging. But the Riverhawks get their first hit. They're off the schneid. An RBI, not an RBI, but a double for Alyssa Brixen. I wish it was an RBI, but a double for Brixen. After three and a half, 1-0 in favor of the Vikings. Vikings at the bottom of their order, 6-7-8 coming up. McHugh, Stewart, and Towner. McHugh struck out in her first at-bat. Stewart struck out in her first at-bat. And Molly Towner had a single and a stolen base back in the second inning. But anyway, what I was saying was I think this is a team that's going to get better as the season goes on. Um, they had their exhibition games down in Florida. I had a chance to talk to Colburn and Buxton about those games. One of the games they played was against Sun Prairie West. Sun Prairie known for pretty good softball teams. Of course, that school split up into two. I understand that. But still, Sun Prairie. Uh, and they lost 8-3 to three in an exhibition game. But Central had eight airs. And so you figure if they don't have those eight airs, Maybe Central wins that game 3-2, three 3-1. To, two, three to and so it's, you know, just one of those things where girls have to get experience playing in the games. And as they mature and get more experience, you can only believe that they're going to get better as the season goes on. They are a very young group. In the meantime, got to depend on those older kids, the leaders, to kind of carry the load until the younger kids get caught up to speed. That's Carmen Peterson, Alyssa Brixen, Grace Blagan. Brianna Mayer. So first up in the bottom of the third, excuse me, bottom of the fourth inning is McKenna McHugh. She is the center fielder for the Vikings. Sophomore watches four ball one. Peterson sets and delivers. Ground ball. Gillitzer eats it up, throws to first, and one away. 6-3 on the put out. Gabby Stewart now steps up, the third baseman for the Vikings. Another sophomore. Stewart from the left side. Peterson the pitch, the ground ball down the third baseline, foul. And 0-1, quickly to Stewart. Coach Colbert saying he really liked that pitch, and I agree. Against the left-hand batter, put it on the outside corner. Don't give him a chance to drive anything. Peterson high with that pitch, 1-1. One and one. One out here, bottom of the fourth inning. Peterson's pitch is low for ball two. 
two and one now, the count. Peterson with the pitch in there on the inside corner. Two and two now. Carmen did a really nice job with her locations. Working both sides of the plate, high, low. Her off speed is working today really well. Here's an off-speed pitch. Stewart goes down and gets it down the right field line, and that is foul ball. I was looking at the home plate guy to see what he was going to call, but the first base guy right there, and he called it foul. Can't see that line over there at all, so I have no idea how close those are. Peterson with the pitch. This one just a little high, and that'll run it to a full count. Peterson missed high with that one, and Stewart draws the walk. Second walk issued today by Carmen Peterson. That'll bring up the eight-hitter left fielder, Molly Towner. Towner, senior. Looks like we might have a pinch hitter, though. And there's no way I'm going to be able to read the number. So hopefully we get it on the announcement. Oh, we're going to have a pinch runner. Josie Hopple will pinch run for Gabby Stewart. Molly Towner will continue to hit. Coach Stewart's still talking with the umpire. Not sure what the confusion was. That is an official entry for Apple. So Stewart would be able to re-enter one time if that's what his plan is. Peterson with a pitch and swung on and missed by Molly Towner. 0-1 the count. Molly Towner, the left fielder today, had a single in her first at bat. One out here with a runner on first. Peterson delivers. This one popped into the air and out of play. Peterson quickly ahead 0-2 here on Molly Towner. Peterson with the pitch. Low for ball one. One and two now the count. Got a lot of action coming up for you this next these next couple months. Softball today, lots of baseball. We're going to have girls soccer. We're going to have an ASL wiffle ball game coming up I think next week or the week after. Excited for that. Peterson with the pitch. This one is low. Runner takes off. Is going. Throw. Off to the right side of the base. Bracelet did a good job just to knock it down, but a stolen base for the pinch runner, Hopple. So a runner now in scoring position for Towner. Big stolen base in a 1 nothing game. Peterson with the pitch. Swung on and missed, and Towner goes down on strikes. Boy, Carmen's been able to get those strikeouts when she really needs them. Let's keep that going. And now with two outs and a runner on second, that'll bring up Mary Korish, the catcher, the senior catcher for the Vikings. Chance to get out of the inning here for the Riverhawks. Peterson with the pitch. This one is low for ball one. Love to get the nine hitter out here and have those top of the order batting with nobody on. Peterson, the pitch. This one is swung on, driven to right field. 
Tomesh is underneath it, makes a catch, and that retires the side. F9 on the putout for Korish. And at the end of four, the score is still 1-0 to zero in favor of Holman. We're going to send it off to the Booster Club. We'll be back right after this on the Central YouTube channel. The mission of the La Crosse Central Booster Club is to raise money to support the sports teams and student activity groups here at Central High School. To do that, the Booster Club runs a school store, the can collection, sells student tiles, and organizes fundraisers. 100% of our profits go right back to the students. In just the past year, the Booster Club has raised over $25,000 and gave it all back to our student teams and activities in the form of uniforms, equipment, and student scholarships. Every year, we give out two $1,000 scholarships to seniors. We are always looking for more parents to join us. Any central parent can join the Booster Club. In addition, anyone can donate money to the Booster Club in support of our mission. Please contact us today if you are interested. Welcome back to Holman. 1-0 your score. As we start the fifth inning. Good ball game here today, especially if you like... Pitching duels. As Jacobson and Peterson both been pitching very well. An RBI triple by Izzy Jar. The difference so far. Central will lead off with Brianna Mayer, the senior center fielder. Jacobson sets and delivers. This one is low and in the dirt for ball one. One out count to Mayer. Jacobson second pitch low and in the dirt. 2-0 now. Been a lot of quick innings for Jacobson. Don't know what her pitch count is at, but it's not very high. Much lower than Carmen's. She had a four-pitch inning in there. I think the second inning was a four-pitch inning. Jacobson with the pitch. This one is in there, swung on and missed. Two and one now the count. Jacobson with the pitch. Swung on and missed. Two two now. Jacobson digs in and delivers. And Mayer swings through it. Strikeout is the first out of the inning for the Riverhawks. And that'll bring up Addie Raisler. Addie Raisler hitting for her sister Emma. Addie, a freshman, Emma, a sophomore. This one is low and in the dirt, ball one. Another player that the coach has really been raving about, Addie Raisler. Excited about her future. Offensively, in particular. This one on the outside corner for a strike. I guess, and it's 1-1. One one. Jacobson pitches. That one is in there for sure for a strike, 1-2. and two. And Raisler now down in the count. Jacobson with the pitch. This one in the dirt. Two and two now. Jacobson been racking up the strikeouts the last couple innings. This one, Raisler, ground ball to short. Jar fields on the backhand, throws all the way across the diamond. And in time, what a play by Izzy Jar. 6-3 on the putout. Holman been playing some pretty good defense. But what I was saying is, Jacobson been getting some strikeouts. Three in the last inning. Started out this inning with a strikeout. Up to four total. Raisler breaks that stretch. The ground ball that Jar made a great play on. Brings up Malia Tomash. 
Tomesh is a sophomore, I believe, but let me confirm that. She is. Sophomore right fielder. Swung on and fouled out of play down the right side. One and one now the count. Two away here, top of the fourth inning. Top of the fifth inning. Why am I off an inning? Am I off an inning? I'm off an inning. I am off an inning. Yep, I'm wrote in the wrong column. Okay. It is the top of the fifth. Someday I'll get it together. Just not today. I'll fix my book here. Pitch is swung on and missed. And Tomesh goes down on strikes. Two strikeouts. For Jacobson that inning. And a great play by Izzy Jar. He is the third out. And after four and a half, the score remains 1-0. Getting pretty late in the game here. Central going to have to get some offense going eventually here. Baseball tomorrow. Softball, on, I'm sorry, baseball on Thursday. Nothing tomorrow. It's a Wednesday. Baseball on Thursday. Softball on Friday. Doubleheader baseball on Saturday. And then we'll do it all again next week. So make sure you're subscribing to our YouTube channel. So you know when we're live and when we've got action for you. Get those viewership numbers up. That helps us when we go out to our businesses and look for money if they know that people are watching. That helps us and support our local businesses, our sponsors. So if you see their name up on the screen, make sure you're going there and buy something from them. We have all different types of products. Insurance. Real estate. Construction. Rental properties. Munson Realty, your go-to for rental properties. Team Wireless for all your mobile needs. LCBA for when your kids want to play basketball. Coach Ferguson will get them right. Got jewelry. Rose Jewelers, one of our fine sponsors. Great prices at Rose Jewelers, too. Well, you can get something nice and not break the bank doing it. Tell them that Nami sent you, or at least that the Central YouTube channel sent you. That'll help us when we go back in the summer and ask them again. Holman back to the top of the order here to start the bottom of the fifth inning in the form of Macy Klein, the second baseman. 0 for 2 so far today. Fly out to center field and a strikeout as Carmen will step off the rubber. The wind picked up a little bit. Now she's back on and ready. And Klein follows one straight back. 0-1 the count. Larry's Dairy. We can't forget about Larry's Dairy. He's going to be catering Zach George's graduation party. So if you come to Zach George's graduation party, you're going to be able to get some fine Larry's Dairy. Here's a swing to right and deep. This one, one hops the wall. Klein rounds. First, are up, now round second. She's on her way to third, and she'll be in with a stand-up leadoff triple. Boy, she almost put it out of here. It one-hopped the fence, and you just figured she was going to do something eventually. She's too good of a hitter to keep down all day long. She does it right there with a leadoff triple. Brings up Isabel Hawkins, the right fielder. Hawkins 0 for 2 today with two strikeouts, and boy, if you're Carmen Peterson... Would you like a strikeout here? Pitch is 
low for a ball. 1 0 the count. Brixon framed it a little bit there, so I think she wanted that call. Been pretty consistent down there. Peterson, this one in dirt. 2 0 the count. Got Jacobson on deck, and then, of course, Izzy Jar. Really need an out here. Peterson with the pitch. That one's in there for a strike. That's about as low as you can go for that low strike. That's where he's giving it to you. Been, been pretty consistent at the knees, and I like that. Peterson with the pitch. That's in the same spot. Great pitch there. Evens the count at 2-2. Two, two. Peterson sets and delivers. That's in there for strike three. Kind of a check swing. And what a big strikeout that is right there. Runner on third. And able to retire. Hawkins with the strikeout. One out. Coach Colburn is going to elect to walk. Marcy Jacobson. That'll be an intentional walk. The problem with that is that brings up Izzy Jar. Is he going to walk her too? Taylor Baker will come in and run once again for Jacobson as a courtesy runner. Boy, Coburn playing with fire here. Must feel better with the matchup. Jar did strike out her last at bat. Jacobson was two for two with two singles. So you see the thinking here. Will it pay off? First and third situation now for the Vikings. Jar up. This one's in there for a strike. Baker will steal second. No throw. Does count as a stolen base for Baker. And now second and third with one out. The pitch was a strike, so it's 0-1. This one, he gets, she gets the outside corner call in 0-2. 0-2 the count. Careful here, Carmen. Long extended signs there, and so... Jar will call time and step out of the batter's box. Big point in the game right now. one nothing in favor of the Vikings. One out here. Bottom of the fifth inning. 0-2 count on Jar. Peterson the pitch. Yes, in called strike three. Wow. On the inside corner gets the call. Coach Colburn looks like a genius after that. I did not agree with that, and I apologize, Coach Colburn, because that worked out perfectly. That's why he's in there and I'm out here. Taylor Everson steps in. Everson 0 for 1. She walked in her first at bat. Swung on and missed there. She flew out to the pitcher, Carmen, in her second at bat. Light at the end of the tunnel here for the Riverhawks. God, if you can get out of this, you feel like he gives you some momentum when you come up to bat. Peterson... Delivers, swung on straight back into the fence, and quickly 0-2 on Everson. Carmen's pitched a whale of a game today. Gotten big strikeouts when she's needed them. Can she find another way to retire a batter here when she really needs it? Pitches in there for strike three. Back to back. Strikeouts for Carmen Peterson, both looking. And what a defensive effort there by the Riverhawks. Coach Colburn pushing the right buttons. Not letting Jacobson bring in that run. Put her on first. And it pays off with a strikeout to Jar and a strikeout to Everson. No damage after the leadoff triple by Macy Klein. Nisa tells me we got to get to a commercial. We'll go to LCBA. We'll be back right after this on the Central YouTube channel. 
The Lacrosse Central Basketball Association is dedicated to developing the basketball skills and character of young athletes who will attend Central High School. Please check out our website, lcbahoops.org, for more information about our year-round basketball offerings. And welcome back to Holman High School as we have a defensive battle going on. Carmen Peterson striking out back-to-back -back batters there with a runner on third. She actually struck out the side because if you remember, she struck out Hawkins too before the intentional walk. So three strikeouts all looking for Carmen Peterson in that fifth inning. 11 strikeouts total for Peterson. Ashani Yang, the batter to lead off the top of the sixth inning for the Riverhawks. Swung on and missed. Ashani Yang, the junior, third baseman, down 0-1. Riverhawks with only one hit. It was a double, two-out double by Alyssa Brixen. Ashani Yang, 0-for-1, struck out in her first at-bat. 1-1 one, one the count right now. Jacobson with the pitch. Swung on over the top and missed. 1-2. One and two. And Yang swung on and missed. Yang goes down swinging for the second time today. And that's the first out in the sixth inning. Brings up left fielder, sophomore Elena Wagner. Wagner flew out to third in her first at bat. Jacobson sets. Wagner squared to bunt and bunted right through it. Strike one. Oh, one the count. Central looking for any kind of offense at all here. Here's a Pop fly, jar at short, calls everybody off, makes the catch. F6 on the putout for Wagner and two quick outs for the Holman Vikings, and that'll bring up Carmen Peterson. Peterson 0 for 2 today. A line out to the center fielder and a ground ball to the second baseman. Looking to get her first hit today. Jacobson delivers. This one swung, hit hard, right at the center fielder who goes down to her knees to make a catch. Another line drive out for the Riverhawks. Carmen's second line out to center field. Ends the top of the sixth inning. Gosh darn it. That was McKenna McHugh who was able to make that, not really a diving catch, but a sliding catch. It was hit hard. And that's how the top of the sixth inning ends. Central going to have to play some defense here, keep it at a one-run game, and give yourself a chance in the seventh with your two, three, four batters coming up. Been a part of games like this. just seems like when you hit at people, you do it all game long. It's so frustrating. Central's gotten good contact a number of times today. And always finds a fielder. They tell you it all evens out in the end. I don't know if I agree with that. It seems like it happens against you way more than it happens for you. You know those Texas League blue pits? They don't seem like they happen very often. For other teams they do. But it felt like for me it was always our team was the one that was hitting right at people. Got to keep swinging away eventually. Eventually, find some open area, get some offense going. It's going to have to be in the seventh inning for the Riverhawks. What a pitching performance by Carmen Peterson today. 11 strikeouts, only two walks. If 
Vikings have five hits, but Carmen's been able to strike out people when she really needs it. Off speed's been working. Like I said earlier, she's been working the plate really well, her location. Able to hit the inside and the outside. She's finding the bottom of the strike zone. Missed with her first pitch there, and it's 1-0 to McKenna McHugh. Peterson's second pitch is low. Ball two now, 2-0. Two Peterson's pitch in there for a strike right at the top of the zone. Coach Stewart did not like, but it's 2-1. Peterson with the pitch. This one up higher, and it's 3-1 and one now. Hitters count for McKenna McHugh trying to find a way on. Any base runner like gold in this game. 1-0 game. Peterson with the pitch. This one is high. And a leadoff walk issued to McKenna McHugh. Only the third walk of the day for Peterson. But this one comes at a bad time as gives the Vikings a leadoff base runner. Coach Colburn going to come out and talk to Carmen, try and settle her down a little bit. Got to keep this game at one run. Just feels like Central, for whatever reason today, not going to have the offense to be able to put up a big crooked number. Keep it at one. Give yourself a chance with your 2-3-4. Gillitzer, Brixen, Blagan do up for the Riverhawks. But first they got to play defense, get three outs. Gabby Stewart, seven batter for the Vikings. 0 for 1 today with a strikeout and a walk. If it's her, did they re-enter? Stewart, they must have. It's a lefty. They must have re-entered her because remember they had Hopple pinch run for her. Stewart squares the bunt, now pulls back. The steal is on, the throw not in time, and a stolen base for McHugh, and now a runner in scoring position. Throw was on line. Nobody was really covering the base. Pitch, I believe, was a ball. We'll find out here. I think it's 1-0. For Stewart. Again squaring to bunt. This time she keeps the bat out there, follows it straight back. Coach Stewart trying to get that runner in to score. Make it a two-run game. 1-1 one, one now the count. That is a big runner out there. Peterson with the pitch. Stewart squares to bunt, pops it up, but it fall, falls back into the fence. One and two now the count. And does Coach Stewart leave the bunt on now? We're about to find out. Does not look like it. Peterson sets and delivers. Oh, my goodness. Just missed on the outside corner. Two, two the count. Boy, oh, boy. Good take there, I guess, by Stewart. Peterson with the pitch. Swung on, fouled back. Stewart stays alive. Two and two the count. The pitch. Swung on and missed, and another big strikeout for Carmen, Carmen Peterson, her 12th on the day. And that's the first out for the Vikings. Here in the seventh, Molly Towner now. Over, excuse me, one for two, the single and a strikeout. Peterson sets and delivers. Square to bunt. Steal is on, and the stolen base is good as 
The throw sent Gillitzer a little wide. Stolen base. Pitch was a strike on the fake bunt. As when you're in that fake bunt, the third baseman has to Yang has to charge. And so that leaves it up to the shortstop to get over there. That's a long run for them. Here's a pop fly. This is trouble. Gillets are unable to get it. That's going to bring in a run. And so a little bloop single. There you go. See, it's always the other team that gets those bloop singles. There is a bloop single RBI and a big one for Molly Towner. As McHugh steals two bases after the leadoff walk and is able to score on the RBI single by Molly Towner. Big run there. One away now, runner on first in the form of Towner. And Mary Korish up. She'll square to butt and follow it straight back off of Brixen. Central needs to get it together now because they're at the bottom of the order. Get an out here. And then navigate your way through the top of the order with two outs. Peterson delivers. Squares the bunt again, this time stolen base. Nice throw by Brixton on the money. The tag is applied by Gillitzer. And that is a caught stealing for Molly Toner. She had a stolen base in the first inning. Excuse me, in the second inning. Brixton says not this time. And that's a big second out. Count is one and one. Quarters up. Swung on and missed. You know, I'm surprised that Holman stole there, and not because they don't want, I mean, obviously they want to get her in scoring position. But now you were probably going to see Macy Klein up again. Now there's a way Central can get out of the inning without seeing Klein. Korish pops it up. Peterson unable to catch it. It's off her glove. It's a foul ball, though. So, dog, gone it. That's a probably an error as it hits off her glove. And she might have hurt her hand, too. Carmen really shaking her hand. Coach Cover might want to. No, oh, she's going to be okay. All right, here we go. So it could have been out of the inning. Instead, Korish gets new life. Peterson, the pitch. This one is swung. Didn't you know that was going to happen? To the fence. Korish rounds first. She's going on her way to second. Throw comes in, and it's a two-out double for Mary Korish, her first hit of the day. You could just feel that. You could just feel it coming as they had a chance to be out of the inning, unable to record that out. And Korish gets a good swing on it, drives it out to the outfield fence. And we see Macy Klein anyway. Coach Colburn going to appeal and see if she missed first base. Oh, no, I'm sorry. He's going to walk Macy Klein. There we go. Thought he was asking if she missed first. Instead, it's an intentional walk. This one I agree with because that brings up Isabel Hawkins. Hawkins 0 for 3 with three strikeouts. So, obviously, you like the matchup there. Not a guarantee, of course. But if you're playing the percentages, you like this a lot better than facing Klein. Peterson pitch swung on and missed. Runners on first and second. Two nothing, two outs here in the bottom of the sixth inning. 0-1 count. River Rocks really need to get out of this inning. Peterson sw pitches, swung on, and fouled straight back as Hawkins was right on that one, but now she's down 0-2. Trying to get out of this inning without that air hurting you. Peterson pitches. It's swung on. It's a ground ball up the middle. Gillitzer dives. Tries to get to second. Not in time. Now the play is at home. Runner scores, and now we got people running all over. Gillitzer was able to get to the ball, but not able to get to the base in time. And so it's a single for Hawkins. Korish comes around and scores. The air hurts. 
the River Hawks, and now we have second and third. With Marcy Jacobson up, is Coburn going to pitch to her? And he is not. There's a third intentional walk issued today. That will load the bases for Izzy Jar, who had a triple in the first inning but has struck out in her last two at-bats. Three nothing now the score. Jar falls one back off the fence. Gilzer did a good job to get to that ball. Just couldn't get up quick enough and get to the base to get the force out at second. And while she was doing that, it was Korish who never stopped running around third and was able to score pretty easily. This one swung on, hit deep. Tolmesh back, and this one's gone. Grand slam for Izzy Jar. Credit her for four RBIs, and there is a backbreaker for the Riverhawks. You know, the intentional walks, sometimes they pay off and sometimes they don't. That one backfires. It worked last time. All you can do is play the percentages. Jar makes some pay on that one. And all of a sudden, a one nothing game turns into a 7 nothing game. Taylor Everson now up 0 for 2 today as a walk and a strikeout. Also flew out to the pitcher. Peterson high for ball one. That's a that's a backbreaker there. Similar similar to last night with the boys game. Didn't see a grand slam, but remember the boys were down all game. Got it down to two heading into the seventh inning. Then proceeded to give up six runs in the top of the seventh and make it not a ball game. Same thing here. This one swung on ground ball. Yang at third. Kicked it around a little bit, got up and makes the throw and got her. Nice play by Yang. Stuck with it. Didn't feel the clean, but it stayed in front of her, and she did a nice job of picking the ball up, making a good throw over to first for the third out, but the damage is done. Off the bat of Izzy Jar with a grand slam. 7-0 seven, seven now in favor of the Vikings. We got to get our last commercial in. We'll head it. Is it our last commercial? It is. Yeah. Second to last or last? Last. We'll send it to the Alumni Association. We'll be back after this on the Central YouTube channel. The Lacrosse Central Alumni Association is a proud sponsor of the Central YouTube channel. The Central Alumni Association meets once a month with the main mission of providing scholarships to Central High School seniors so they can continue their academic pursuits. Last year, the Alumni Association awarded $63,000 in scholarships to 66 deserving Central students. For information on how to join the Alumni Association or donate, see our page on Facebook. Welcome back to Holman. As the score now 7-0 in favor of the Vikings after a rough top of the seventh inning, excuse me, bottom of the sixth inning for the Riverhawks. Ellie Gilter will step in. Gilter 0 for 2. Two ground outs to the second baseman. Fine. Better be ready when Gilter's up. Here's a swing and straight down into the dirt. 0 oh, 1 the count. As the wind gusts pick up and we got papers flying all over. Oh, 1 the count. Jacobson with the pitch. This one in the dirt. 1 and 1 now the count. Well, you just feel all the air go out of the central overhawks with that. Grand slam by Izzy Jar. Jacobson with the pitch. This one followed back off the plate. One and two now to Gillitzer.
Jacobson sets and delivers. This one swung on. It's hit out to left field and caught for the first out of the inning. F7 for Ellie Gillitzer. <coughs> That'll bring up Alyssa Brixen, the only hit of the day so far for the River Rocks. Was off the bat of Alyssa Brixen. It was a double back in the fourth inning. What a game by Jacobson. One hit allowed no walks. She has not walked a batter. This one is high. One and one now the count. One hit allowed, no runs, no walks. The one hit, the only thing standing in the way of a perfect game for Jacobson right now. Six strikeouts. Been impressive. We talked about 2.33 ERA last year. Hard to score runs off her. Here's a ground ball back up the middle, and Brixen is going to have a two-hit day. Yeah, a single, one-out single for Alyssa Brixen. Brings up Grace Blagan. Blagan 0 for 2. Flew out to right field in her first at-bat, struck out in her second at-bat. Jacobson delivers. This one outside for ball one. Throw back to the pitcher is high. All the way to center field, but nowhere to go for Brixen. And now we'll have time as... Is that Alyssa running over there? Did they do a courtesy or not? I, now my roster blew away. Yeah, it is. Okay, so they're keeping her in there. Seventh inning, so you don't need a courtesy runner. Blagan swung on and missed. One and one the count. Jacobson delivers. This one is called a strike. It was above the letters. But nonetheless, it's one and two. Jacobson with the pitch. That one in nearly the same spot. This time it's a ball, and it's 2-2. Two, two. Runner on first, top of seven, one out. This one is low, and... Full count now for Blagan. Jacobson sets and delivers. That is inside, and the first walk of the day by Marcy Jacobson is issued to Grace Blagan. So runners on first and second now, one away. And we might see, what are we going to see? We're going to see a runner for Blagan. It's going to be Maddie Young. This will be an official entry. So a pinch runner in the form of Maddie Young for Blagan. Get my book in order here. So the batter will be Brianna Mayer. Mayer 0 for 2 today. Ground out to the third baseman and a strikeout. This one swung on off the right side and out of play. Oh, one the count now to Mayer. Jacobson with the pitch. This one swung on. It's a fly ball. Klein back from her second base position. Makes a catch. 
And two outs now. And that'll bring up Addie Raisler. Raisler, 0 for 2 today, a ground out to the pitcher and a ground out to the shortstop. Riverhawks down to their last out. Jacobson with the pitch. This one is high. Raisler able to hold her. Swing up, 1-0 the count. Might be able to hear the wind picking up here a little bit. But Holman, the sun has gone away. It's gotten quite a bit cooler since the start of the game. Jacobson with the pitch. Raisler swung through it, 1-1 one one now the count. Raisler swung on and missed, and now the River Rock's down to their last strike. One and two the count on Raisler. Two outs, top of the seventh. Jacobs in the pitch. Swung on and missed. Strikeout for Eddie Raisler, and that's how this one will end. The final score. 7-0 in favor of the Vikings, but it was not a 7-0 game. 1-0 all the way through to the bottom of the sixth inning. And the Vikings able to take advantage of some central mistakes, score six runs in the sixth inning uh, to blow this game open and make it a 7-0 final. We're going to send it to our donation sponsors while I get the final tallies up. We're also going to hope that we hear from Coach Colburn. I'm hoping he'll come out and join us for an interview. I'm not sure. We'll see. So we'll be back right after this. I'll get the totals for you and we'll be back. Consolidated Energy Company is a local family-owned supplier of refined fuels and propane. For more than 30 years, they've supported local homeowners, farmers, and businesses in the Cooley region and beyond. Customers count on Consolidated Energy for reliable supply and service at competitive rates. Check out their programs created to meet your unique fuel and propane needs at ConsolidatedEnergyCo.com or call 608-782-3308. This Central Riverhawk sports broadcast is brought to you in part by Munson Realty, a locally family-owned professional property management company. Serving the La Crosse area since 1988, looking for a place to rent? Contact Munson Realty at 608-785-7187 or online at MunsonRealtyLAX.com. YouTube channel. The Central Alumni Association meets once a month with the main mission of providing scholarships to Central High School seniors so they can continue their academic pursuits. Last year, the Alumni Association awarded $63,000 in scholarships to 66 deserving Central students. For information on how to join the Alumni Association or donate, see our page on Facebook. All right, let's get, you want to give Kevin, keep your phone here, give Kevin the headset? Okay. Where's your headset, Dad?
All right, welcome back to Holman as we are going to be joined by Coach Kevin Colburn. Get his headset on here. We'll get him on the camera. Here I am. He's here, but the camera, are we frozen or what are we here? We had some difficulty with the Wi-Fi. So as you put the camera on me, it broke? <laughs> I think it broke. But we at least have audio of it. We, we do have audio. Let me try one thing here and see if we can get this back on. Nobody really, really needs to see me anyway. Oh, no. Everybody wants to see you. You're the main attraction. That's a scary place. <laughs> if I'm the main attraction, you do not want to go there. <laughs> All right. Well, at least we have sound. Thanks, uh, Colton, joining us here on the uh, broadcast. Let's talk a little bit about the game. one nothing all the way to the bottom of the sixth inning. How did you think the girls played leading up to that sixth inning? I thought we played okay. Um, there was a couple of plays. Looking, I, I think six of the runs were unearned. Um, you know, if we make the plays we should make, that should be a one nothing game. And, and on the other side, you know, especially in the first two or three innings, they made play after play after play on, on really well-hit balls. I mean, I was really happy with the way we swung the bat the first three innings, especially the top of our order. Um, they just made plays, and you got to give them credit for that. Yeah, that top of the first inning, three hard-hit balls and three outs, a 1-2-3 inning on three really good swings. Uh, so you kind of felt like it was going to be that kind of day right from the beginning. Let's talk a little bit about Carmen Peterson, though. Pitches the whole game, 12 strikeouts, only three walks, a couple intentional walks. We'll talk about that in a second, but 12 strikeouts. What was Carmen doing well today from here? It looked like she was locating really well, and she had her off-speed working. Yeah, I mean, all four of her pitches worked really well today. Um, you know, she was really good last year. She's a returning first-team all-conference pitcher she's added a pitch which has made her even better um her screwball was working really well today i mean we probably only six or seven fastballs that entire game it was basically screwballs and rise balls and mixing in the change up a little bit um you know when she moves it and can can locate it like that she's going to be really tough to hit and she was today i think all three of her walks were intentional um no i'm not sure about that i see a couple there was only three because we walked uh jacobson intentionally twice and Klein right. once yep yep so um so Let's talk about those intentional walks a little bit. So you got away with it the first time. We were talking, we, I was talking out here, uh, bringing up Jar. I know she'd struck out in the at-bat before, um, and you got away with it. I said, you look like a genius doing it. The second time, not so much as, as Jar made you pay for it. What's the thought process that goes into putting people on base, just playing the percentages? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, Klein and Jacobson are their two best hitters. I know that. They're very both very good. Um, you know, both those situations, um, especially the last one, you know, you got runners on second and third and the three hitter up who's probably the best hitter in the team. You know, you got to make somebody else beat you, and you got to give Jar a lot of credit. We got her the bat, at bat before. We had struck her out that bat before that too, I believe. Um, and, you did, uh, yes, you did. And yep. you know, she got one just just up in the air a little bit, and it, you know, it was it was a well throw pitched ball. Um, she got underneath it, and, and it just carried out. And you know, sometimes that's going to happen. We're going to play the percentages. You know, um, I've always been a believer. You don't let the best player in the other team beat you. Um, and, and that's what we were thinking there. And, you know, Izzy Jar is a great player, too. There's a reason why they probably got her backing up Jacobson because, you know, she's she's dangerous. Absolutely. So let's talk just a little bit about this team, what we're expecting from this team. I mentioned on the broadcast they're very young. you got a number of freshmen, a number of sophomores that are playing important, uh, important innings here. Is this a team that we're going to see get better as the season goes on? I hope so. You know, it's not even that we're – it's not just that we're young. We are very young. But even in some of our our kids that are older, they're just inexperienced. Um, we got two other uh, upperclassmen that have never played uh, on varsity before. You know, we really only have three girls back that have played varsity. Um, so it's going to be a growing process. And, and you know, um, they're going to get used to facing pressure situations and get used to, um, you know, making plays in those situations. Um, you know, I'm really impressed with our freshmen. Um, you know, Ellie Gillitzer is a, is a great, great shortstop. Um, she actually hit the ball really well tonight. I don't think she had anything to show for it because yep. they made two diving plays to rob her, but she made the uh, hit the ball well. Um, Addie Raisler is another freshman who, who just goes up and swings the bat. She didn't look great in her last at bat, but the two before, she, she got good contact. Um, you know, our freshmen are, are, are going to get better. Our sophomores are going to get better. Um, you know, the great thing about this team is, is our seniors, our four seniors, are really good leaders. They've really taken those kids under their arm. You know, we had the opportunity to go to Florida last week, um, and it was just great to see our seniors take those young kids under their arm and, and take care of them, and we're going to get better. Yeah, I'm excited to watch this team grow. I'm excited to watch uh, the young players get better each uh, week. And we'll be, we will be covering a number of the games here on the YouTube channel. So, um, viewers, make sure you stick with us, and you'll be able to watch this team improve in real time, too. One more question for you, Colburn, before you head out. First of all, thank you for joining us. I know after a loss, the last thing you want to do is come on and talk about it, so I really do appreciate that. 
was watching Twitter last night, saw you were really excited about WrestleMania, got to see Cody Rhodes finish the story. What were your thoughts on WrestleMania last week? I'll tell you the same thing I tweeted. Uh, Harry Potter is more real, so I don't want anyone making fun of me for being a Harry Potter guy because Harry Potter is more real than the stuff you guys are watching. <laughs> Joel made me so. ask that question. All right, thanks, Coach. Right, Good luck. Back. We'll see you later on this week right, against South Alaska. Yep, bye bye. <laughs> Couldn't wait to ask him that question. <laughs> All right, let's go over our uh, final tallies. We mentioned Carmen Peterson goes seven innings. Sorry, six innings, uh, 12 strikeouts to three walks. He said the three walks were all intentional. Is that true? It's not true. Um, they were just spread out. So she had to walk in the first inning, the fourth inning, and a different inning, the sixth inning as well. Uh, I did not count the three intentional walks against her. Um, so Peterson gets a tough loss there. Hitting-wise for the Riverhawks, uh, pretty easy to go through because there were only two hits. Both from Alyssa Brooks and Peterson was 0 for 3. Gillets are 0 for 3. You heard Coach Corbin talk about she made good contact. There's nothing to show. Brixen 2 for 3 with a double. Blagan was 0 for 2 with a walk. Mayer 0 for 3. Raisler 0 for 3. Good contact. Nothing to show. Tomesh 0 for 2. Ashani Yang 0 for 2. And Elena Wagner with two flyouts was 0 for 2. For the Holman Vikings, Macy Klein 1 for 3. Isabel Hawkins, one for four. Marcy Jacobson, two for two, was intentionally walked her last two plate appearances. Izzy Jar, two for four. A big RBI triple in the first inning, and then the back-breaking grand slam in the sixth inning. Five total RBIs. Everson was 0 for three. McHugh was 0 for two. Stewart was 0 for two with a walk. Molly Towner was two for two. And Koresh was one for three. That'll do it for our broadcast here tonight. Thank you for tuning in. We'll be off tomorrow night, and we'll be back Thursday for baseball as they host. Who do they host? They're, no, they're going to be on the road at on Alaska in a rematch from yesterday's matchup. Baseball on Thursday and softball on Friday from State Road and then a doubleheader on Saturday. So thank you for tuning in. For Ray George, the cameraman, for our producer, Anissa George, I'm Nami George. Thanks for tuning in. Have a good night.